Dr. Graham Murray. Why do you think research is so important? Well, the good news is that we already have uh, many effective treatments for people with mental illnesses that allow many people with these kind of problems to make full and complete recoveries from the difficulties that they're having. But there are a number of people who, for a whole variety of reasons, might not respond to the current treatments that we offer, or they might only make a partial uh, improvement, or they might make a good improvement, but the treatments that we offer have very troublesome side effects for some people. So for these people who we are not currently helping as much as we, are, we would like to, there's an unmet need and we really need to do more research to understand more about their problems, why they don't respond to current treatments and develop new treatments that we can offer to people. What is your role in research? So I have a role in University of Cambridge where I direct a research group in the Department of Psychiatry and that research group works very closely with my role in CPFT in the NHS where I'm a consultant psychiatrist in a community mental health team called Cameo that treats older adolescents and young adults who are presenting with symptoms of psychosis for the first time. Uh, psychosis is the medical term for a condition where your mind is playing tricks on you and you find it difficult to distinguish what's real from what isn't real. And we try to offer excellent high quality interventions at the early stages of illness because we know from all the research evidence in fact that if you intervene early and effectively that can improve outcomes in the long term. What is your specific area of interest? Well, early intervention into psychiatric conditions is really important. It makes sense. If you intervene early, then you can improve outcomes. Why wait until people are really, really struggling before you offer help? So this is an area where research really has already had a big impact on clinical practice. 15 years ago, we didn't have early intervention for psychosis services in the UK, but now we have them all the way across the National Health Service and we have them because of the research that's been done in the NHS which has shown that these teams, these specialist services to treat young people presenting for the first time are effective and that they improve outcomes for the long term. So this is an interest that I have uh, in this area and we need to develop better treatments and optimise our existing treatments. What studies are you currently undertaking with the Trust? Well, we're involved with a number of different studies looking at the causes and the treatments of uh, mental disorders, in particular psychosis. So some of the studies that I'm involved at with look at uh, the mechanisms behind the symptoms that people present with and trying to understand more about the links between the brain and the mind. We tend to treat the problems that people have, sometimes with talking treatments, but sometimes with medicines. But people are complaining of problems such as depression or hearing voices or other symptoms that affect their mind and yet we treat them with drugs and we don't understand as well as we would like the links between what's going on in the brain and the chemicals that help your brain work and produce your uh, effective mental functioning and uh, the kind of problems that can occur to people with mental disorders so we're doing lots of research to try and understand more about the brain mechanisms of psychosis and related conditions and if we understand these mechanisms better then we can offer more effective treatments. Are CPFT and the University of Cambridge making breakthroughs? So one area where we had some recent success was in looking at a talking treatment for people with mild symptoms of psychosis. So these are people who were neither severely ill with uh, their condition nor were they completely well so they might be hearing a few voices which are disturbing to them but which are not dominating their life at all or they might be having suspicions which are not founded in reality but which they just can't get out of their mind and which are causing them some distress but again they're not dominating their life so they're not completely ill with these problems but they're not uh, completely healthy either 
And for these people, we felt that it wasn't, it's not necessary to take a medication, which might be associated with the possibility of side effects, but that a talking treatment might be effective for these people to help them understand more about what was going on in their mind and gain more control over their thoughts. And so we did a randomized controlled trial of talking treatment called cognitive behavioral therapy. And we found indeed this, this uh, treatment program was able to help reduce the severity of symptoms that people were having. And we hope that this, uh, this finding will influence services that are offered across the National Health Service uh, and beyond. So that was very pleasing to be able to show that uh, here was a new intervention that actually can, can be helpful to people, but which currently is not being widely offered. And so we hope that it will be offered more widely.